We don't want to neglect our throw. We want to embrace it. See what I did there? Spin it. Family, welcome back to another salty unicorn jersey. And uh, if you know, you know. Anyway, drop in the comments. What's this in reference to? Yes, another bracing video, and and maybe you'll get tired of these. My last one had pretty good response to it. I'll link that uh, up here if you haven't seen it yet. You can go back and watch it. But uh, since my last one had good response, I figured there's a couple of other things that I do to help me feel the brace. And yes, I, I'm pretty good at bracing. I'm not good at timing. We'll get into that in another video. But I'm pretty good at bracing. And I think it's because I spend so, so much time training my mind to feel it uh, over and over again. And I don't do it all the time. But every once in a while, I revisit it because I think we can lose it. So even though you have the brace down, don't neglect it for all time. Come back. I, I mean, I revisit the basics of every movement and every skill with my softball team. Even the high school level, we do bare hand uh, ground ball drills and bare hand tennis ball pop-up drills just because our bodies have to constantly be reminded of how to do the basic mechanics and basic movements of the sport. So don't neglect it. Don't say, okay, I'm good with that. Just move on and never come back. You can move on and, and not do it for a while, but Every once in a while, you need to be revisiting this stuff. So anyway, I'm going to go over two drills that I do that help us, that help me. Sorry, I'm not going to impose this on anybody else. They help me, and hopefully they'll help you too, uh, identify or train my mind to, to feel stopping. Okay, And I talked about it yesterday with the shed wall, and I know how to stop before I hit that. I know how to brace before I hit the shed wall. Uh, I have a little ridge around my shed here that you can see that I use uh, to help me feel my my foot getting into that brace, right? It, it, it provides barrier, actual barrier resistance. And I know that we're not doing this on the course, but again, this is just over-exaggerating a movement in order for us to help our minds connect to it. And you can do this inside too, and I may need to move inside because it's starting to rain, but I'll do this as outside as, as much as possible. You can get a blank wall and do this same thing. Um, I like doing it here because I have a little room between my brace and the actual wall. Inside, you know, you'll have to really stop. So I don't know, maybe that is good. But here's what I do. Uh, and, and you start slow here at first. And it's just walking up and and planting your brace right at the foot of this of this barrier, right? And you hit your foot right at the base of it. And it just it's just a it's a, just another physical cue for your body to be able to feel what's happening with your foot trying to stop that momentum from going forward, right? And the and the progression is really simple. It's just speed, right? So at first I just walk up to it. And put my foot against it, right? And I'll I'll feel this foot pop up a little bit, right? And then as you as you do that, you can start getting faster, okay? Uh, and the faster you go, the more you're going to have to push down to stop your momentum from going forward. Now, I would caution against doing like a full run up with this. Actually, I'm going to tell you not to do that. I think you can do some damage to your leg if you go really fast with this drill. So the disclaimer is go medium half, like half speed with this. Like I walk up anyway. I'm not, I don't run up. I walk up anyway. So I can do my full run up because I'm basically half speed. But for those of you who run up, do not do full speed or even 75% speed run ups with this drill again. This is only to connect our minds to the feeling of stopping, right? And this barrier helps us visualize and physically feel, oh, my foot can't go for further and I have to stop my momentum before I hit this wall, okay? Um, so I've tested it out a little bit and, and, and this is probably the fastest that I would go. And you see, I get some pop up there, my, my body pops forward and I have to stop myself Okay, from going forward. This drill is really good at 
giving myself a mental cue as to what that feels like. The other thing that this helps us do is, is give us a mental cue of how we plant that foot into the ground. Uh, because there's, I mean, discussion about you go heel first, you go toe first. Uh, to me, and Josh and I talked about this in, in one of my last lessons because I'm having problems with my brace timing. Uh, and he saw that I was having problems on how I was bracing. Like, you, oh, I know we're supposed to keep on our toes, right? Keep over, keep over our toes, keep on our toes, keep athletic, and that's great. But when it comes to the plant, if we are too toe-oriented in our plant, uh, we are ineffective with our plant. And worse than that, we could probably injure ourselves. If you are too toe oriented or too heel oriented, when you go to plant, it's not as effective and you create injury risk, I feel. The way we plant is full foot, right? We want the, we want the weight distributed along the entire side outside of our foot when we go to, when we go to brace. And I get it. If you watch the pros, if you watch it, your toe hits, your toe will hit first, right? Your toe will hit first, but as you're getting down into that plant, it should be against the entire outside of that foot. Your heel should not be up as you're bracing. Your heel needs to be down. Your toe needs to be down. It's the entire side of your foot. Stopping your momentum takes a lot of force, a lot of resistance. You want the most of your foot touching in contact with the ground to help you actively resist your momentum going forward. So please do not slam down with your heel and your toe up. Do not slam down with your toes and your heel up. You can put your toe down first, but really when you're into your plant, sink into that entire side of your foot. And I think this drill helps us with that feel that entire side of our foot coming in contact with that barrier and then resisting as we go up. Okay. So this is drill number one. Again, the progression is start with just basic walk up. And I like to repeat myself, but I just want to make sure I'm clear. Basic walk up to feel that foot and then get to, for you guys that run up, get, get to half speed, right? So here, okay. So your weight's popping up and you feel yourself resisting the urge to follow through. So that is drill number one. Let's move on to drill number two. And I think I'm gonna go inside for this. All right, so two quick things that I want to go over that I didn't go over outside. I wanna get them out of the way real quick before you leave. If you haven't already left, if you've already left, you wouldn't have heard that. Anyway, two quick things. One is that outside drill is also good for how long your plant is, right? You can really gauge out there your level of comfort of how long that last stride should be, right? If your last stride is too short, you're really going to have problems stopping yourself going into that wall. If, you're, if your last stride is too long, you're going to have problems feeling the brace and popping up, right? You'll get to the brace and just be like this. If the, if the last stride is too long. So the problem may be not in your bracing, but how long that last step is. Maybe you're too long in that last step, which is why you can't feel the brakes. Or maybe you're too short in that last step, and that's why you blast over the, the brakes. So that's another thing that that drill outside can do is help you gauge where that sweet spot is in the length of your stride for that last brace step. The other thing is you notice I have nothing in my hands. No disc. Put the disc away, put the disc down. We are isolating movements here. Disc golf, a disc golf backhand is a full body movement. And it is very difficult for us, our brain, to isolate, compartmentalize different aspects of our form if we're trying to do them all at once. Years and years, decades of coaching softball has taught me that if you want to perfect a certain movement, you have to perfect all of the aspects of that movement. And in order for our minds 
to comprehend how each of those aspects are executed, we have to isolate them. There's no difference here with the brakes. You need to isolate this from the rest of your movement at the beginning so you can feel it and that when you put it all together, you don't have to think about it anymore. It's instinctive. Okay, so that's what we're doing here. So please don't get into the, yeah, I know, but you need to open your foot and rotate and all. I'm not worried about follow through. I'm not worried about rotation. I'm not worried about arm path here. I'm not worried about any of that. We put just actually put all that aside. I think that does us a disservice when it comes to the brace. We're trying to think of too many things at once. Fix the one thing first and then start building on that. Okay, that's that's just my coaching philosophy. I, my mind can't comprehend all these things at one time. I'm too simple. I told you my intelligence level is down here. My brain can't handle that. I need to isolate. Okay. I would, I would recommend you isolate too. So that's what we're doing here. We're isolating the brakes, feeling us sinking into that brakes. Now, having said that, I'm going to incorporate a little bit of rotation into this drill. What we're going to do right now is go over the second drill. And, and Josh talked about these uh, in, in his throw for overthrow disc golf during his brace, one of his bracing videos. Uh, and it's the cross country skiers, right? It's uh, windshield wipers, whatever it is, back and forth, right? And I know Clint uh, in his video said he wasn't fond of them. He didn't think they were, they were great. Uh, he said they're better. Uh, but I really appreciate these because in, in my mind, they really emphasize the abruptness of the stop of the brace, okay? Uh, and you can go back and forth, right? You could go back and forth just to get, just to balance yourself, I guess. But the way that you throw is the way that you want to emphasize more. So I'm left-handed, so I'm going to emphasize more going right to left into my brace, okay? And again, uh, I'm not worried about shoulder rotation, right? I'm not worried about arm path. I'm not worried about timing. All I'm worried about is feeling the pressure of my body sinking into that foot with these, right? And I can go as far as I can, right? And stop myself. And, and that's, I mean, it, this is as simple as it is. And again, attention to detail when you do drills. When I do that, I need to feel the entire side of my foot, again, planting against the ground and stopping myself from going forward, okay? And again, I know we're, we're not supposed to come back. We're supposed to follow through. But in this drill, I just want my body to feel, okay, that. I want to feel resisting, okay? You can add, like I just referenced, you can add an element of the hip turn. And maybe it's good for us to do that. Add an element of the hip turn, right? You can do it without it. And just go left to right, right? But then, once you're going the direction that you throw, for me, from right to left, once you land, allow this brace to push this hip up and back and allow this hip to come around a little bit. So it looks like this. Okay? Go back to your right, go to my left, hit, and let my hip turn, right? Sink into the brace, let my hip turn and finish here. So that teaches my body, okay, my brace is hitting and that helps my hips turn, okay? We're not worried about this leg for right now, we're just worried about the brace and stopping ourselves and, and then incorporating a little bit of that hip turn as we do it, okay? So again, you can go as aggressive with these as you want, uh, as you can, and it's just making sure that your body knows how to stop and then incorporating that little hip swivel at the end. So there you go. Two more drills to help you. That's four. I keep doing this. Two more drills uh, to help you with your brace, to help me with my brace and connecting my mind with what my body should be doing when we're bracing. Again, I hope these drills help you out. Uh, they help me out. Drilling for me is, is how I learn stuff. It's how we all learn stuff, but uh, doing this type of stuff really solidifies things in my mind. So there you have it. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for uh, 
tuning in. Thanks for all the comments and the feedback that I get. If you have anything that you want to see from me, or if you have any modifications of the things that I'm doing uh, that you want me to try out, I'll do that as well, and then I'll give feedback in a video. This is what I'm all about, just dispensing information, trying things out, and getting it out to the community for everybody's benefit. So, again, thanks for joining along. Until next time, enjoy the journey. Here's your first day.